One of the last things hikers do before they go to bed at night is they hang a bear bag. A bear bag consists of all their food, their garbage, and their smellables. But the point of a bear bag is to prevent any sort of bears or other critters from coming close to their camp. When you're choosing a tree, you want it to be at least 15 feet high and the branch that you're going to throw it over to be 15 feet away from the trunk of the tree. The easiest way to do it with a space blanket is to put everything into the center of it, take the top, twist it, and then tie a square knot. The bear rope is usually going to be a thin, darker colored parachute cord because bears and other animals don't have very good sight at night. Take that and you're going to put a monkey's fist into it. You want to keep it as far away from the trunk as possible. Once you have the monkey fist over the branch, grab it and pull it towards another tree. Never tie it to the same tree. As you do, you'll hoist up your bear bag. Tie an overhand knot and you have yourself a bear bag. If the bear bag's there in the morning, then you did it right. And if the bear bag's not there in the morning, then you did it wrong. Blair and I, still having a little adventure left in us, figured we were up for some nightlife at North South Lake. It was only a short jaunt, and what we'd find was anyone's guess. Chris and I were thrilled to find that on the most accessible point along our route, we came upon a site that rivaled any other. Tonight, North South Lake Campground was proving that regardless of skill or ability, everyone should have this locale on their list. What a way to end the day. <sighs> it's time for everyone to get up and grab some breakfast here at North South Lake Campground. This place crawls with wildlife. And like us, you're likely to spot a deer or two during your stay. No one likes to eat and run. And speaking of running, it was time for Blair and I to hit the trail. Today will be one of our long hauls. We'll be going straight through non-stop to Platte Clove Waterfalls and Art Preserve before hitting our shelter. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what it's all about. Oh, I'm so tired, but this is all worth it. I love hiking <laughs> through these areas. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. This is why it's all worth it, Blair. It's worth it. After a long day, it's worth it. Yes, oh, it is. Okay. I think of this path here, uh -huh. there's, I heard that there's this cabin okay. that like artists go to for a couple weeks at a time to find inspiration, obviously. I can understand why. And, um, <laughs> and sort of just work on their creative art. Okay. So. Why don't we go up there and see who's home? Yeah. I think All we right. should check it out. Excellent. Hopefully someone's home. Yeah. All right. Let's get out of this rain. Oh. Wow. Beautiful. Um, really is something else. Black Clove Preserve is the first American school of landscape painting, dating back to 1825. It was here we met with Inverna Lachpez, who ran the program. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. hi there. How are you? Good. Could I could I help you with something? Yeah. Yes. Um, my name is Blair. And I'm Chris. This is Chris. I am Inverna. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. 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 And we're yeah. just um traveling along the trail here. Inverna told us about the program and the influential writers, painters, and other artists that visit the retreat to gain inspiration from its natural setting. She shared an example of how these artists contribute to socially relevant topics. Let me give you an example. 9-11. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had an artist, that uh, a photographer, Carla Shapiro, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she wanted to know how, what kind of contribution I can make, I have to do something. You know how you feel paralyzed and that, uh, what can I do as an artist? So yeah. what she did, she wrote down the names of all the individuals that died in 9-11 mm -hmm. and wow. came to the cabin after she spent weeks doing, doing this. She hung the names on a line with wow. the river at wow. the bottom that it let the oh elements, God, the water, uh, the fog, uh, so the paper will deteriorate yes. with the names. And that's what happened to those individuals. They finally die again. 
Inverna then showed us the rich heritage of the preserve, much of it going back more than a hundred years. Artists have even kept diaries of their stays here. Inverna had to be going, but she invited us to stick around and fix something to eat. She said we would have some friends to meet, and maybe later, a musical treat. Oh, Oof. oh this place is so beautiful. It really is. I'm so glad we met Inverna. Yeah, Inverna really runs a great program here in the Casco. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. You must be Inverna's friends. We are. I'm Lori. Pleasure to meet you, Lori. I'm Chris. Welcome. Chris Hi. And Blair, right? Blair, yes. Hi. Hi, Blair. Nice to meet My you. Chris. Ira. Pleasure to meet you, Ira. This is Ava. Ava. Hi. Hi. Well, you guys actually have a seat. We're just getting ready to eat if you want to join us for some to. food. And then maybe we can make some music afterwards. How I would that love that. That's awesome. Story, Lori, and Ira are famous folk musicians that we were lucky enough to have a potluck dinner with. And that after dinner treat. Ava, it's so nice to meet you. Come over here. <laughs> Take a later. seat right over here. Is that